a new thing when it comes on a person when that the person is in the old soul is in the past the new the, the, the new things what they do because they are here to transform you they fight for the space when they are fighting for the space that is when it damages occur and those damages goes in making that anointing get lost let me use this example somebody who was involved in sexual immorality actively actively you come and you get born again after getting born again you receive the gift of the holy spirit you receive the anointing of the holy spirit you receive whatever you receive from god what will happen what will happen most likely the soul ties will wake up and they will start attracting destroyer of the new wine that is the rider and when she comes the jezebel you find yourself not in a position to resist her or him so you give in saying i will go and repent by the time you are finishing the action the anointing already has been spilled out so when you are waking up from that act you are waking up as a samson when the princess of god has left you that is what i meant but god says if you deal with the past and you become a new wine skin and then the new wine is poured on you both you and the new wine are preserved the anointing that will come upon you and you the person will be in tandem you will be safe and you shall find that uh, you will be able to practice without hindrances i've given you those and especially I've given you the example of apostle james mainangan because he is a man of god who have come out publicly to talk about his past so he has already put out himself outside there as a reference for us who are young who are coming in the ministry to know that we cannot be ashamed of our pasts but we can use our past to become good and better in today and tomorrow is only a fool who runs away from their past pray jesus christ so we have seen whenever you will be able to handle your old wine skin your past the anointing of god that will come upon you is preserved and you as well are preserved but jesus is speaking there he said that when the time will come for them to look for the new wine skin they will find themselves having to fast and pray prayer and fasting pray jesus christ we have so much to discuss but uh, i can see our time is closing uh, very down we never have enough time praise jesus christ manila 3 verse 2 he said to them therefore every teacher of the law who has been instructed about the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old praise jesus christ so you need to be coached to deal with your past you need to be trained by somebody who have already conquered the your past he says the teacher of the law who has been instructed about the kingdom of heaven is like a man of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old there are people who only bring out of their storerooms old only old only even when you are having stories with them you are only referring to the past you cannot hear them speaking about new things but jesus says that person is only one who have been put under training that to so you find jesus had to train his apostles for three and a half years daniel shadrach meshach and abednego had to be trained for about was it a period of one year or three years or something of the nature training is very relevant 
is very important. That is why even in friends like us, servant of God, we do go and sit down before other men of God. They teach us, they train us because that teaching, when that man of God who is a senior in authority is speaking, he covers you with his conquests. You get that? So if he has ever conquered his past, when he is speaking, he covers you with that ability to conquer the past. So you find when you are leaving that service, you, you feel relieved. You know? You feel relieved because there are some pronouncements that are made by that instructor that goes in changing how you see things from within. There are people who only see things from, from the physical for Jesus Christ. Let us go a bit. We're talking about overcoming our past so that we can experience, uh, we can have new experience. When I told you, when you're dealing with your past, you start by confessing and repentance. And you cannot do this when you are hiding somewhere. You need somebody who is listening to you as a testimony. Because Jesus said, if you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. So you need to be somewhere. You are making a confession before a person who has a spiritual mandate to forgive. Because if you go and you just, you are always seeking deliverance and you are delivering yourself, how is that possible? Pray Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter number 3 and verse 10. The book says, eh, verse 3, Colossians chapter number 3, verse 1 to 10. Since then, you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on other things, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our, your life, appears, then you also will appear in him in glory. Put it to death, therefore. Whatever belongs to your other nature, sexual immorality. So these are persons, these are, ch these are church. They are already born again. But there are things they are finding themselves having to practice. They are old. They are old. It's a person the man of God is telling them. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to whatever belongs to other nature. Sexual immorality, impurity, rust, evil desires, and greed, which is idle time. Uh -huh. Because of this, the love of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways. So he is saying, This is your past. You used to walk in these ways. Hey, okay. In the life you once lived, that is a reference to the past. You used to walk in this way in the life you once lived. But now, but now, you must read. You must read yourselves of all such things as this. Anger, rage, malice, slander, and if you don't have from your lips, do not try to each other since you have, you have taken off your old self with its practices. Because you have taken off you are all the same with its practices and are put on you on a new self. You are put on a new self which has been renewed in the knowledge in the image of its creator. Did you get something here? Let us go back again. Verse 10, verse 9. Do not try to each other since you have taken of your old self with its practices. So the old self that is the past stronghold has it practices. So if you have not taken of it, you find the practicing its behaviors. You are in Christ, but if you are working with your old self, you are past. That means it has not been discarded. It's like a, a garment. Zechariah V. It's like a garment. You remove it. Then you put it down. Then you take the new garment of salvation and you wear. These two garments have their uh, behaviors. 
the Philippine government has its behaviors that even if you want not to do it, you find yourself doing it. The new government which is celebration, when you wear it, it has its behaviors, you find yourself practicing it. And he says here what? And I put on the new self which is being renewed, which is being renewed. So you put on the new self. And he says it which is being renewed in the knowledge in the image of its creator. When we started in verse 3, in verse 2 he said, set your minds on things above, not on other things. If you want to discard your past, do what we call mental transformation. And be transformed in the renewal of your mind according to Romans 12 verse 1 to 2. How do you handle your past? So that now you can start practicing and experiencing the new dawn. Is number one I told you, dedicate your body as a living sacrifice. Number two, at the same time, be transformed in the renewal of your mind. Why? Because it is from these two, the body and your mind, that is your soul, it is from these two behaviors and the characters are done what? Are processed. So if you have dedicated your body as a living sacrifice, but you have not transformed your mind, you find when the mind processes a behavior, the body is found weak to resist. And that place, it is calling the past to start happening to you. So he is saying, when you have, he said in verse 1, since then you have been raised with Christ, set your heart on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. This is a person who started by dying. And you die in the body by getting baptized in the water. That is what we call you do personal dedication over a sacrifice to dedicate your body. Number two, he says, set your heart on things above. Change your meditations. He says, set your mind on things above. Transform your mind. He says, what enables that in verse 10 is when you, you encourage the knowledge of God. Like now we are talking the knowledge of God. Praise Jesus Christ. Let us write something else that will break you to note. Titus 3, verse 3. Titus 3, and verse 3. The man of God says, I will write the stats from verse 1. Remind the people to be subject to rulers and authorities to be obedient, to be ready to do whatever is good, to surrender no one, to be peaceable and considerate, and to show true humility towards all men. Verse 3, the man of God Paul says something. At one time in the past, at one time, we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pressures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. So he is referring to the past. But when the kindness and love of God, our Savior, appeared, he saved us. So what saves you from your past is kindness and the love of God. Not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. You contact the masses of God. When you know you have a dark history, contact the masses of God. Don't go there to justify yourself. He saved us through the washing of rebirth. This is how you deal with the past. You need number one to approach the washing of rebirth. That means you must be baptized with water in the river Jordan. Not on a swimming pool. Not with a basin. Not in the river. In the river. Go with the man of God in the river. Be baptized there. Be buried with the Christ. Because when you get buried with the Christ, your sins or 
all your past sins are washed away together with your consequences. Number two, and renew by the Holy Spirit. This is what you are saying. And renew by the Holy Spirit. And this teaches us what Jesus said. Unless you are born of water and of the Spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. Many people have been born of water, but they are not yet to be born of the Spirit. Therefore, they are half cooked. So they experience half the past and half the new. So you find there is a lot of compromises in such a kind of a person who have not undergone this process be number one be uh, experience the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit whom he poured out on us generously the Lord Jesus Christ our Lord and our Savior okay so that having been justified by his grace having been justified by grace you need to seek justification of grace and that is why our ministry is called Amazing Grace. You need to contact the grace of God. Go to a certain man of God and contact the grace they have. Unashika? Go. If you know you have been struggling with the sexual immorality. You get that? Go and contact. Go and sow a seed to a man of God who has a record of holiness. He has never broken marriage. The woman he entered into wedding with is the one that he is with even at now. And he is well advanced in years, not these young couples. The one who have already finished the list of marriage, so a sibling. That is what we call contacting the grace. If you are coming from a certain background, for instance, like a robbery with the violence, like thiefing, and all those things. Go to a man of God and contact his grace who has ever been in that industry and has overcome. That's what Jesus says, have been justified as by his grace. You need to contact the graces that are in another person that you are seeking. Ha! Ah, he continued to say, We might become heirs having the hope of eternal life. So the past has died. Because now you have become a hair. You get that? So the past was you are a slave to sin. Now you are a hair to eternal life. Meaning there is a transition from slavery to hairship. That one you manage it by undergoing those three process I've told you. You need to participate in the washing of rebirth, renewal by the Holy Spirit, and justification by grace. Okay. People will continue being imprisoned by the past unless we come to Jesus. Let Jesus help us. He is the only one. He is the only one. Revelation 21. Let us go there. The Bible says in Revelation 21. Can we read verse? Let us just read from verse 1. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. That is what called the past. The old self, the old nature has passed away. When it passes away, it creates space for the new to come in. And there was no longer any sin. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautiful breast for husband. And I heard a loud voice from the Lord saying, Now the dwelling of God is in them. Ah, and he lived with them. There will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. Maganda ya maganda ribo. When the old is speaking, the Bible here says, when the old is still speaking, the sea is still there. They see temptations. He says, a person handling old, he experiences tears. He experiences death. He experiences mourning, crying, pain. Those are uh, fruits of old nature, of past. But he says, when the renewal 
has been done, God is the one that he comes to do in you. He lives with you. You become his people. And the God himself will be with you. And will be your God. Not here. When you do away with the past, there is something you need to note here that it comes in your life. Your new Jerusalem is, 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 is revealed. Meaning what? Your destiny is around to land. Your destiny. So whatever stops people's destinies being released is the old under. Is the under, is old under of things. Because when the old under of things passed away, what came in? New Jerusalem. The holy city. Your destiny. Let me tell you something. If you are there and you are struggling with your past, you need to move very quickly because it is a major obstacle to you entering into your destiny. As we see with the group that was led by Korah, they say, let us go back there. Here we are just wasting our time. Well, because they were still held captive by their past. But Joshua and Caleb managed to handle it. They allied into their destiny. Oh. Okay. We are there. Hmm? Where are we? we are there. Praise Jesus Christ. Let us read Isaiah 65 verse 17. Isaiah 65 and verse 17. Behold, I will create new heavens and a new earth. The former things will be, will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. But be God and rejoice forever in what I will create. For I will create Jerusalem, for I will create Jerusalem to be a delight and its people a joy. I will rejoice over Jerusalem and it take delight in my people. The sound of weeping and of crying will be heard in it no more. Why? Because the former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. Why? Behold, he has created new heavens and a new earth. That is why he must petition God. In Isaiah, you can read the word of but let us go to Isaiah 66 verse 22. As the new heavens and the new earth that I will make will endure before me, because of Lord, so will your men and descendants endure. From one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, all mankind will come and bow down before me, says the Lord, and they will go out and look upon the dead bodies, and all that. So the Lord himself is the one who is committing himself about the journey of renewal. It is his work, but you must be available for him to withdraw from your storeroom, that is from your heart and from your mind, or your past. Let him remove them from your mind, from your emotions, from your spirit, from your heart, so that they can get space to pump in new things that can determine the course you are going to take. Praise Jesus Christ. Revelation 2 and verse 17. He says, He who has a near, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna. I will also give him a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to him who receives it. So telling us our old nature or our past can cling to our names. He says, I will give him a stone, a white stone with a new name written on it. A new name. Meaning there was a new name. What we call the curse of the name. I'm giving you references that you can use when you're in your prayers. Pray Jesus Christ. Revelation 12 and Revelation 3 and verse 12. He who overcomes, 
I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will we leave it. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God. The new Jerusalem. The new Jerusalem. Who? The one who overcomes. So you must endure yourself to be an overcomer. Who is coming down out of heaven for my God. And I will also write on him my new name. So when we come to Christ, we are not supposed to be being with our past. We are supposed to position ourselves eh, to be with the where we now belong. With the where we now belong. But the problem is we are not able to belong there because the past speaks speaks with a resounding voice. We must contact God. We must contact God. And that is why we are in the prayer season. We are asking God we have come to, dis to disconnect ourselves from every past that is hanging on us. Isaiah 62 and verse 1 to 7. He says, For thy sake I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet till her righteousness shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a brazen torch. The nations will see your righteousness and all kings your glory. You will be called by a new name. Names are important in building away with your past. There are names that are a carriers of our past. Actually, they become spiritual banks, spiritual storms of our past. Whenever your name is invoked, it it, it 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 incarnates some of your past. Because your name is a name that is a tribal, is a societal name. It is a name from your clan. So whenever it is invoked, it must bring to four prey. The person you are in accordance to where you were born from. That is why I tell people to dedicate their names. If you cannot dedicate your names, change your names. Where are you? You will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. You will be a colonel splendor in the Lord's hand. A royal diadem in the hand of your God. No longer will they, will they call you deserted, abandoned, or a name you run desolate. But you will be called Hevziba. And you run Beura. For the Lord will take delight in you. And your run will be married. As a young man marries a maiden. So will your sons marry you. As a bride. Groom rejoices over his bride. So will you. Will your God rejoice over you. I have posted watchmen on your walls. Oh Jerusalem. There will never be silent day or night. You who call on the Lord. Give yourselves no rest and give him no rest till he establishes Jerusalem and make her the praise of the earth. Where, which is the condition of Jerusalem at this point? The Jerusalem city is in Lambo. They have just been destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar. But what I want to teach you something here. What is God saying? He is going to use to overcome the past that Jerusalem is is dwelling in called deserted and desolate. He said he shall use intercessors. He shall use intercessors. God says he has posted watchmen. They will never be silent day or night. They will call on the Lord. They will give him no rest until, until he establishes Jerusalem and makes her the praise of the earth. Jerusalem that was in Lambo, that was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar. And they prayed the rights of Daniel, the rights of Nehemiah, the rights of Ezra, the rights of Haggai, the rights of Zechariah, hmm? the rights of Malachi. They prayed, they prayed until Jerusalem was rebuilt. Jerusalem was reinstated. It overcame 
that birthday past where they were being called desolate and deserted they had become the dwelling place of jackals and wild donkeys and foxes but now they have become the praise of the whole earth you can as well be if you be able to surround yourself with the people who praise for you to be righteous people whose mandate is to pray for your righteousness for your holiness pray Jesus Christ do you have people who pray for you if you don't have people who are praying for you the past keeps on haunting you because intercessors are a war are a war that forbids entry and also that removes every dirt from within they stops entry of that and they remove the dirt within so therefore you become righteous and holy and that is when you overcome your past and you find yourself you are rebuilt that is what surprises people they see someone from god who have a very dirt a very dirty background but today they are doing very smart things of god go in their offices they have a team of people who on 24 hours are crying to god for that servant of god when you surround yourself with a team of intercessors no past however big however traumatizing however scary can you be able to mismanage you in the name of jesus christ oh hallelujah Pray Jesus Christ. Colossians 2 verse 12. Colossians 2 verse 12 because we have about uh, nine minutes. Colossians 2 verse 12, the Bible says, and we get to listen to this. Having been buried with him in the baptism and raised with him <clears throat> through your faith in the power of God, who is okay. We have said, we have read Colossians 2. Let us read it from verse 9. Let us read it from verse 8. See to it that no one takes you captive through horror and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human traditions, the past, human traditions, and the basic principles of this world, rather than Christ. So Christ is the answer. <laughs> For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in the body form. And you have been given fullness in Christ, who is the head of every power and authority. In you, in you, Christ. That's why I said, walking in him. Not walking with him. Walking in him. Uh -huh. And you, you were also circumcised in the putting off of the sinful nature, not with the circumcision done by the hands of men, but the circumcision done by Christ, having been buried with him in baptism and raised with him through your faith in the power of God. Who raised him from the dead? Here, as I think, continue to say, when you are dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your sinful nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having cancelled the written code, your past, the written code with its regulations, that means with its punishment, that was against us and that stood opposed to us, that is obstacles and stumbling blocks. He took it away, nailing it to the cross. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, who actually actualizes your past, he defeated them. He made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. How many weapons do you find in this scripture that a number of person conquer their past? Number one is participating in the circumcision that is done by Christ. That is baptism. That is having been buried with him in the baptism. So the conversation that is done by Christ is called be buried with him in the baptism. And be raised with him 
grow your faith in the power of God. That is what is called the circumcision that is done by Christ. Unabatizwa kwa maji kumanisha unaziko na Kristo. You are buried with Christ in baptism and then you are raised by faith in the power of God. P. When that has taken process, many people they get baptized, but do they undergo this process? Then that baptism must be be raised to the standard of that uh, it is a uh, Jesus barrio you are participating. And when you are coming out of the water, it must be raised to a standard that uh, you are resurrecting in Christ by faith. You go to point number two. You contact the cross of Calvary. That is what I called an altar. You raise to God a new altar. Because a stronghold is demolished by another stronghold. And we say the name of the Lord is our stronghold. So to destroy a stronghold called the past, you need a bigger stronghold called the name of the Lord. And you cannot be permitted to move in that force if you are not in the cross of Jesus Christ. Because we have been told it is on the cross the written code that is the past. All your events are always written down by the devil. They are put in a certain fire. And they have what we call regulations. And they carry some certain powers who is to be against you and to oppose you. Get that? But when you go to the cross of Jesus Christ, that all is destroyed, is nullified, is washed away. And it is made to be utter nonsense. And it cannot stand to, uh, to, to bring any accusation before God concerning you. So are you applying the cross of Jesus Christ? Because this is the way we defeat these things. 9-0. Unless you contact the cross of Jesus Christ. These pasts they, they, they attract powers and authorities to come to actualize your past. So you did it and you forgot. But the powers and authorities, when they investigate your spiritual realm and they find there are pasts that have not been handled as prescribed in the word of God, they get hold of them. And using them, they stand on them as a legal ground that gives them legal right, legal access now to oppose you and to stand against you. But when you go to the cross of Jesus Christ, that is why even if anyone wants to reinstate your past, it doesn't hold waters. No one even listens to what you are saying. But if you have, if you have not contact, you have not come to the cross, of Jesus Christ, and you need to know what was on the cross. Number one, on that cross, so you started by raising the cross. On that cross, there is a body on it. That is a sacrifice, and then that body is oozing out brand. That's the brand of Jesus Christ, the brand of covenant. Don't you see? And he was crucified on, on Calvary, on God of God. So you must come to defeat your past. And on the top of his head, they wrote his name, Jesus of Nazareth. You get that? So there are, these are weapons that when you get hold of and you face your past with it, it is destroyed. It is cancelled. It is voided. It is wiped away. It is washed away. The cross of Jesus Christ, the body, the sacrifice, and the brand of Jesus Christ, and the name of Jesus Christ, no past can stand on you. And that is where you find the people of God. Many believers have backslided. They have disowned Christ. Because when the past visited them, they were not in a position to disown it. And there was no one who was there 
to teach them how to cut the link that joins them with their past such that when it is drawing them back they can resist so that they can press on it managed to draw them back and where they are now they were great anointings of God they were carrying significant spiritual importance in our generation but because of the past they are now leading out and there they are the laughing stock they are in scorn actually they have been turned out to be a blasphemy to the name of the Lord because the past overcame them when the the former girlfriend that you had came back when you are happy with your wife there and your two children or three children and said I am legally married with here and if not so we are going to the court this one will be settled in the court blah 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 blah, blah. and your marriage from there lost its taste your wife stopped trusting you yourself you lost esteem you are demoralized somebody take you know when we are dealing with our pasts this is not an area where we just jump jump huh? say no oh, oh, I am born again this is an area where you sit down and you turn yourself to a personal meeting and you say I have some business I need to look into that are behind me go to the man of God sit with him in the office this is not something you do during the service this you do it on one on one service sit down with the man of God express yourself tell him everything without hiding anything but in this matter someone who can be trusted a man of God that can be trusted because you have some others you tell them your stories it is it is a sermon of Sunday they will preach with you on Sunday and you lose your esteem they will fight you with that revelation go to a man of God that you know is trustworthy is confidential pour out yourself then repent let the man of God pray for you he will take you through the process of conquering the past let me tell you something even if how that the past was it will want to come back to come back it will be finding that you are not its candidate you are not you are not in there for it pray Jesus Christ I will leave you there with the following scriptures Philippians 3 verse 21 the book says eh? uh, but uh, verse 20 but our citizenship is in heaven <coughs> and we eagerly await a savior from there the Lord Jesus Christ who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our royal bodies so that uh, they will be like his glorious body Okay, that's the one, the one number one I want to leave you with. Galatians 6 and verse uh, and verse 13. Okay, verse 15. Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. What counts is a new creation. Philippians uh, chapter number 3, verse 21. Philippians 3 and verse 21. Or oh, we have just read that. Okay, Ephesians 4, verse 22. Ephesians 4 and verse 22. Let us read. I'm reading you these scriptures to help you. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which has been corrupted by its deceitful desires. Past will always corrupt your standings, your standards, and your principles. Verse 23, to be made new in the attitude of your mind 
and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Ephesians 2 15. I'm leaving you these scriptures that are able to enter into your spirit and change you. Verse 14 15. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility that is past. By abolishing in his flesh the law with its commandments and regulations, his purpose was to create in himself one new man out of the two that's making peace. And in this one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross by which he put to death their hostility between him and God. Ephesians, okay, uh, uh, hey. let us conclude on the second Corinthians, second Corinthians chapter number 3 and verse 6. Second Corinthians chapter number 3 and verse 6. He has made us competent as ministers of a new covenant, not of the letters, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Now, if the ministry that brought death, which was engraved in letters on stones, came with glory, so that the Israelites could not look steadily at the face of Moses, because of its glory, fading though it was, will not the ministry of the spirit be even more glorious in the ministry that condemns men is glorious? How much more glorious is the ministry that brings righteousness? For what was glorious has no glory now in the comparison with the surpassing glory. And if what was fading away came in the glory, how much greater is the glory of that which lasts? Therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. We are not like Moses who would put a veil past, a veil, a symbol of past, over his face to keep the Israelites from gazing at it while the radiance was fading away. But their minds were made dark. For to this day, the same day remains when the old covenant is read. Old covenant is read. Old. Past. It has not been removed because only in Christ is it taken away. Even to this day, when Moses is read and Jesus is already crucified, when Moses is read, a veil covers their hearts. Past. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the past is taken away. Now the Lord is a spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we, who with unveiled faces, now the past has been, the veil is taken away. Now you are unveiled. So the covering that was called the past has been taken away. All reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed into his likeness with the ever increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I release you to the new creation. I decree and declare right now, may you start a true journey through overcoming your past and start now writing down a new history. Praise Jesus Christ. Romans 7 and verse 6. But now, by dying to what once bound us, we have been released from the law, so that we have been released from the past, so that we serve in the new way of the Spirit and not in the old way of the written code. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I release you to the masses of God, the one who can be able to make you new in Jesus' name. Romans 6 verse 4. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into Dead in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, from the from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I declare: Be an overcomer, overcomer of 
overcome your past. Go to your new self. Become a new creation that cannot be questioned of the past event of the history of the old order of the old self in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Apostle John Hatame of Amazing Grace of Jesus Christ Center. My numbers are 0112-796463 or 0708-213-715. Contact me. I help you to conquer your past because even myself, I had a past that God helped me conquer using the tools that I've taught you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord give you and may the Lord bless you. I leave you under the masses of the Lord and under the amazing grace of Jesus Christ. Shalom. Peace be with you. Amen.